Hi, good morning. Grace and peace be yours through Christ our Lord. I'm Pastor Ralph Hill from Mount Horb Lutheran Church. Today we're dwelling in the Word. It's a weekly uh, adventure that Pastor Joanna Gregg and I look forward to each Wednesday. Uh, and it's a way for us as God's people to read a portion of Scripture and then ask the dwelling questions, which are basically, what jumps out at me when I read this? What questions might it raise? And as I read this and listen through my faith, do I feel a nudge of God speaking to me, calling me to do certain things, or maybe have a different perception on the day ahead? Uh, today is March 16th. It's a Wednesday. Um, and so we also encourage you to come to our worship at church each Wednesday during the season of Lent at 7 o'clock. Uh, we can either worship uh, in person, it's going to be a Vespers at 7, or you can watch online through our YouTube channel. Blessings on your day that we're keeping each of you as our members um, in our prayers as we go through this season. And if you're a guest with us, we're especially glad you're able to join us. So we've been using um, a, a booklet that we passed out to our congregation not long ago um, called Drawn to the Cross. And it's a Lent devotional to help us get through each day. There's a reading of scripture. There's also a shared insight from Henry Nouwen. And then uh, just some thoughts about, uh, about that particular day. And so today we're gonna look at um, a devotion called Eyes of Faith. And it starts by reading John 1 verses um, in the first chapter of John, of First John. So let me read this. It's gonna be First uh, John, not the Gospel of John, but the, the letter in the New Testament. First John chapter one, and I'm gonna read verses three through about nine. So here we go. We declare to you that what we have seen and heard so that you may also have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his son, Jesus Christ. We're writing these things to you so that our joy may be complete. And this is the message that we've heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in God there is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with, with him while we walk in the dark, we lie and we don't uh, do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So as we hear this word today, what jumps out at you? Um, what questions might it raise? And what nudge might you feel? You know, there's a word that was used a couple of times in this passage called fellowship. Uh, that they were enjoying a certain fellowship as they gathered together. Uh, it's a, from a Greek word koinonia, but it's a coming together. It's a communion. Um, and what they're lifting up uh, um, in the, the writer and the people who are with him is that there is a, when, when people of God in faith gather together, there's a sense of fellowship. There's this communion where the impetus and the, the empowerment of their coming together comes to them from God. And it's like a light that shines on their lives and their thinking. And even um, if they come together from different perspectives that might be negative or they might be under duress, that something happens when they gather together, that God's presence in their coming together kind of elevates them above the worldly back and forth, the right and wrong, bad and good. And there's a sense of God's presence in their lives. And they use the word joy so that our joy may be complete. We're also trying to share this with you so that's a powerful thought for today about um, being called as God's people to live by our faith in Jesus Christ. That means to, to know and understand the kind of life Jesus led and what he was trying to teach us and then trying to follow that way in our own lives, even though the world is difficult uh, sometimes, that there is a sense of light and clarity in our lives that helps us navigate as we go through life. I know it's something that I um, appreciate and even uh, seek over and over again through my own daily devotions and my struggles when I see things that just don't seem to be going the way we want them to go, but you pray that God will help us see with more clarity what needs to be done. 
Henry Nowen had a few thoughts on this, uh, and I want to share this for today's um, devotion, uh, and it's titled Eyes of Faith. Um, Eyes of Faith. I was in one of my favorite movies, The Way, uh, that's directed and written by Amelia Estevez. His dad, Martin Sheen, plays an eye doctor in the movie. And um, they say that uh, the eyes are the windows to the soul. And it is interesting that it's how our eyes take in all this information from the world that fills us with certain things. So when we take in faith, it, it fills us with a new perspective. Um, and so this is what Henry Nouwen says. Thus, discipleship is the life of the Spirit in us, by whom we are lifted up into the divine life itself and receive new eyes, new ears to hear, new hands to touch. Being lifted up in God's own life, we are sent into the world to witness to what we've seen with our own eyes, have heard with our own ears, have touched with our own hands. I think what he's talking about here is when we experience the true presence of God in our lives, whether it's in worship or whether it's in an act of service, um, when you're helping someone, that's often a time where when you're sharing compassion in a compassionate way, something to somebody else in need, um, God promises to be in those moments and so when we experience that presence of God in our life um, it gives us a new perspective on life and it helps us to see beyond the old perspective it's a more clearer perspective um, for us as we do this I was trying to think of a, a personal time where maybe I needed some clarity and a, one a couple things jumped out at me um, like whenever we go visit uh, a family member or something and I have to get up in the middle of the night for whatever reason and I'm not familiar with the room that I'm in or where I have to go um, I don't know if you've done this but sometimes I'll keep my phone by the bed so that um, I get up at night and I can use my flashlight to kind of help me see so I don't stump my toe on, on a piece of furniture or something one of the neat gifts that somebody gave me a few years ago one of our members is this and it looks kind of uh, interesting but here's my story about it uh, we love to go camping and oftentimes when you're camping in a tent, uh, it can be dark and you might not know what's going on and it's hard when you can't see. So they gave me this gift and it's something you can actually attach to the top of your tent, like with this little hook here. You can attach it to the tent, but when you pull it down, watch your eyes, when you pull it down, woo, it's a very bright light that can help you read or see if you have to go down a trail to the restroom or something. Uh, and it's really helpful. So today, I want to, I guess we're relating this eyes of faith with when we begin to focus and use these daily disciplines that we have um, during the season of Lent to kind of focus and grow our faith and just uh, begin to understand that our faith comes from God. And as we worship and as we pray and as we study and as we, as we have faith conversations, uh, we begin to see and experience God's presence in our lives more more with more clarity and it helps us better focus on what we are called to do in the world and maybe it's like um, a light that we use uh, in a flashlight kind of a way to help us see um, maybe not just physically in the world but begin to see in a more faithful sense or as this says eyes of faith um, as we live out each day so one thing to think about today as we gather and we get ready to gather for worship tonight is that this gift of faith God gives to us through the Holy Spirit, that in our baptisms we receive this gift of faith. How do we allow that to let us see the world differently, the way God intended it for it to be, which in Genesis is good. The things that God created are good. And we're called to live a life that not only embraces this goodness, but receives it as well, and it wells up in us like a joy that the disciples talked about today. So blessings on your day as uh, you continue this Lenten journey. We encourage you each day on your own to dwell in the Word. Take a few moments in the morning just to read a passage of Scripture and, and, and dwell on it. And uh, blessings as we get through this season of Lent together. Let's close with a prayer. Our good and loving God, we're thankful today for the light that you shine in our lives through this gift of faith. Help us to nurture it through worship, through study of word, through prayer, and through faithful conversations we have with our friends and people that are of faith, that help us work together, realizing we're not alone.
that you've given us the gift of community and family. And so help us to use all these things to enrich our experience of life in this world so that we can use um, this lens of faith to help us see. In your name we give you thanks and pray. Amen. Hey, peace and blessings on your day.